So is it, is it the flavor that's legal or the food? It's gone full French, man. Who takes a bag of candy like this, opens a candy, eats half of it, and puts the other half of the candy back inside the candy bag? Boys doing? It's gone full French, man. So are we drinking on the job? <laughs> What's going on? I just came back from my honeymoon in France. It was lovely. And for one part of the trip, Ivy and I were lucky enough to stay at a farm where they made a traditional French delicacy known as foie gras. Now this food is actually banned from being produced in California and a few other countries in the world. What is foie gras? Why is it banned? The name literally translates to fat liver. And usually it's a pate, which is kind of a meat paste, made from the fatty liver of geese or ducks. I think everyone's gonna like this. I think you're gonna dig it. Now when humans store their fat, we tend to store it under our skin. However, birds, such as ducks or geese, also store fat in their liver. And before they migrate, they gorge themselves on food, causing these fat deposits to build up for the long journey. The liver, rich in fat, is what makes foie gras so tasty. But in order to produce it, the physical process of growing the fatty liver in the bird needs to be triggered. This is where the controversy enters the picture. Because they live on a farm, these birds don't migrate. Therefore, they don't gorge themselves. In order to trigger the growth of the fatty liver, they must be force fed in the last few weeks before they are slaughtered. To understand how the force feeding is done, it's important to understand the physiology of the birds. Geese and ducks don't chew their food. They don't have teeth. Instead, they swallow their food whole and they store it in a sack at the bottom of their throat known as a crop. Also, they don't breathe through their throat. A tube from their lungs actually runs out through their tongues. So following the physical process, much like how a duck swallows a fish whole, a farmer uses a tube to deposit a portion of the food in the bird's crop. The abundance of food triggers the liver to begin storing fats, and then the liver for foie gras is created. That said, I know that no one here at Corridor has ever tried this before, and because it's banned, the crew will never have the opportunity. I wanted to share this little experience of French culinary history with them. I brought back foie gras from the farm that I stayed at, and I want to surprise everyone. No one knows what this is. Maybe they'll find it delicious. Maybe they'll hate it. We won't know until they try it. Now, how do we really know you actually went to France? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I go on a trip, I like to bring back gifts for people, little treats, things like that. I'm trying to think of a good gift I can bring everybody in the studio. We have some friends of the family that have a farm in France, and this is something that they make. I'd like you guys to taste it. It's a meat-based thing. I personally find it delicious. Uh, the production of it is banned in California. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh... Yeah. So this is my gift to all of you guys. First off, a little toast. So is it, is it the flavor that's legal or the food? The two legal flavors. Two legal flavors. Legal two flavors. All the flavors. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, guys. What are you doing, Sam? Cleaning up the ants. It's because there's a bunch of rotten oranges here, and then someone, 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 who does this? Who does this? Who? Who? Who takes a bag of candy like this? This is what I found. Who takes a bag of candy like this, opens a candy, eats half of it, and puts the other half of the candy back inside the candy bag? Okay. Without what? Either, what? There was a half-chewed piece of candy just sitting in the candy oh bag full of ants. Wait, do anything up here for a while. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. So everyone, watch out. I don't want to eat the ants. Illegal <laughs> ant flavors. France. <laughs> Anyways, here, here is the culprit too. I threw it in the garbage, but I missed, and then more ants swarmed around it. <laughs> See that? I'm so confused. Like, what world do we live in when you're filming a food segment for a YouTube channel and you don't want to clean up the ants first that are literally on the counter? Little spices. There's still more over here. What world is Nico living in? Yeah, all you gotta do is just wipe out the main trail of them and you're generally good for a while then. I think they're coming from over there. Do you have any idea what Nico's gonna be doing with us? No, but like, apparently it's so important that even ants and it can't get in the way of this food. What if we just ate the ants? I think part of the plan. <laughs> um, all right guys, try a slice. Is it? Is this meat butter? <laughs> meat is, butter? is this like meat dehydrated butter. peanut butter? It smells like meat butter. <laughs> yeah. When was the last time you had it? Yeah. Meat I'm not gonna lie, this kind of smells like like dog my food. dog food. Dog food. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Are you getting back at us for yesterday? No. Tastes like meat butter. <laughs> I don't think I've ever. Adrian doesn't look convinced.
Let me wash it down with this yeah. one. <laughs> it's just weird to taste meat without the meat texture. It's like, it's like, that's like a cow fell into the, the butter factory's churning machine. <laughs> you know how like sometimes dog food smells really good and you kind of just want to try it? I mean, this is like that, except like. it's actually what? like What? No, what are you talking about? Like, no, we're gonna go. no one ever thinks it. You don't have a dog. No, you you wouldn't understand. No, I, I've, never, I've never smelled dog food that I wanted to try, I don't think. So do you guys know what foie gras is? No, no, I, I have right. no idea what that is. You bake it with the fat, you blend it up with spices, and you get this. So it's meat with a ton of fat mixed into it. So it is meat butter. <laughs> so what's the illegal aspect of this? Is, is yeah. it the, uh, the feeding of geese until they're so, their liver is so fat? Is that the unethical part here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got our patrons, yeah, and they love us too. We've got Andrew Koppel and Richard Lindbergh and Rory and Sohawk Lai. We've got Taylor Dunbar, Glitch Cube, James Bailey, Brian Antojic, and Richard Blackburn, too. Yeah, they help us out in making videos, and if you're interested in helping us out, too, you could go to patreon.com slash quarter digital, give us a buck or two, and we'd use it to make a cool video. Give Nick some not gray hair. And then we'd know not to make music for our career. <laughs> oh, hey, man. Today's a good day. Why? It's Monday. I've got days left. I usually keep my phone on silent. This week, no. It's on loud. I have it set to extra loud in case Sarah, my wife, calls me. Little baby G. Baby G, man. It's gonna get real this week. It's very emotional, actually. It's like, the more he's, like, it's like, it, it, it's weird. It's getting very real. It's, it's hitting me really hard. But there's other good news. There's over a hundred VFX shots in this anime self-driving car video, and about a third of them are full CG shots. Cars, 3D, oh my God, there's so much work. Can I get all the previs for this video done before my baby is born? Drive through here, through here, and through here, and you never drive through here. Did you do all the animation? Wait, have you already done the animation? For what? The downhill segment. No, I'm gonna start that. It's gonna be all straight, and then basically I'm gonna camp the camera, and we're just gonna place anything at like an angle. Like a really harsh 45 degree angle. This is how steep the hill is. That's absurd, dude. Yeah. It's not gonna be real, though. I, mean, I know, but how scary is that, driving down that steep of a hill? No, I get it. Let me rephrase. Not that it's not gonna look real. I worry that maybe it's gonna be so extreme. Okay, there are no there are no roads in existence right now that are like 45 degree angles. 30. 30, 30 exists. Perfect. Super steep, by the way. I know, that's why it's gonna be super scary. Yeah, no, I, I dig it. I like it. Oh my god, I'm just like constantly animating these cars. They look so good. Oh my god, these shots. <laughs> um, dude, yeah, I even animated a camera car in certain shots. As you can see here, it's very important that we get actually the actual perspective of the drivers, so I actually went into the scene and animated the camera by hand. Yeah, that's me. So basically, I had to go into the scene here and actually get the shots by myself. <laughs> um, that's me there. Holy sh bonkers, dude. And that's a yes. I did it all. I have, I counted it up. 37 previs shots. Oh my god. 37 doesn't seem like a lot, but when you pack 37 into about six days, that's 37 shots across about like 20 files. My mind is like numb. I gotta drop them into the sequence. I gotta clean it up. I gotta throw anime. Oh my god, there's still a lot of stuff I have to do. What I did easily is gonna take around a couple, like two or three weeks of work to actually realize. I'm building this stuff and he's finishing. I, I hand him the stone and I hand him the blueprints and then he takes the chisel out and the polish and he turns it into the actual beautiful shot. Things he's gonna be adding. He's probably gonna make some camera tweaks here and there. He's gonna be sprucing up the environments a little bit so there's street lights and some guardrails, stuff like that. He obviously is gonna do the lighting, the HDR map that's gonna set the scene lighting. There's all sorts of little things he's gonna do. Not to mention, make sure all the car materials are, are well, uh, basically working. So yeah, put about, yeah, probably fifth, somewhere between 50 and 60 hours just into the previs. I think Ren finally, finally understands everything that's happening. So I was trying to think of like what I could compare approaching fatherhood to be like and I started realizing that being a parent is kind of like Dungeons and Dragons. Imagine, imagine this, imagine this. I know how the world works. 
generally, and I'm about to encounter a new player in this world who has no idea what the world is, what the rules are. So, you know, I mean, I mean, when he's born, it's it's gonna be it's gonna start the same way as any D and D starts. So like, so the year is 2018. Donald Trump is the president, and you wake up and find yourself in the state of California. What do you do next? And I'm just there to help shape the world and explain things along the way. It's when the kid asks about something, I'm there to explain it. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm playing DM in this little kid's life, and so that's really exciting, actually, because I know I know how to do that. I'm like, oh my god, I got it. Once I get over the whole like poop and pee thing, yeah. What are a couple things that you're afraid? Of happening. Things okay, good good question. Aside from all the real life physical stuff. The birth goes well. Yeah, assuming it's, it's after that of happening. Oh man, I'm 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 afraid of becoming a lame guy. <laughs> a lame dad. Although Jake became a father and then I think he almost got cooler after that. <laughs> All his qualities suddenly got like really sharp and refined. You know, his personality, his work ethic, everything. So everyone's so free. everyone's been constantly like, huh, get sleep while you can, huh, have fun while you can, huh, do do anything you're trying to do in your life while you still can, because it's about to be over. <laughs> it's the same thing with getting married. It's the same thing with making any decision. It's once again, D and D. Come on. Remember that? Remember that? Like I'm already in the mindset. Like I got it. This would be great. You know, I am. I'm. I'm a little saddened, but also really relieved uh, that I'm going to be taking about a month off here. I'm probably going to be working from home. Gonna, you know, keep in touch. Probably swing by the studio every once in a while. So you'll see a check-in. You'll all walk in. Everyone, like, hey, what up? And I'm like, hey, how's it going? It's me. Remember me? I'll be. I'll have like a gray beard. The founder's picture. And like that's me. Oh, that was me when I was younger. <laughs> Shall we take the Mario hats and put them on and film a video? <laughs> I'll be master, I'll play Master Chief. <laughs> Here we go. That'll be me in like two weeks after I deal with all the stress of having a kid. If you don't come in Monday, that means Baby G's landed. Yeah. Three, two, one. You know who can hold his breath for a long time? Tom Cruise. And in the next Sam and Nico video, we're going to see if we can hold our breath longer than he can. It's going to be great. The whole crew is going to go for it. I've been training. So is Jake. Subscribe if you're not. Oh, no.